Hi, and um, welcome to the Irish American Chambers program on landing a job after COVID-19. This is a recording from the pres presentation we held a couple days ago. Um, I just wanted to make it a little bit more seamless with transitioning everything. So we're gonna take a look going forward as to how possibly I might be able to give you some tips and ideas and strategies on how to land your next job after, after COVID-19 and everyone's shelter in place uh, restrictions have been lifted. So my name is Pat Buchanan. I have a company called PMB Marketing and I'd like to begin with this presentation. So we're going to slip into the slide deck right now. So um, let's get there. So as I mentioned, we ran this session a couple days ago um, that we had some glitches with the recordings. And so I wanted to re-record it just to make it a little bit more seamless going forward. So once again, my name is Pat Buchanan. I'm doing this on behalf of the Irish American Chamber. And uh, the topic today will be landing your next job after COVID-19. So, I just recently came back from Social Media Marketing World's conference out in San Diego at the end of February. And one of the things that we, um, I heard a lot about while I was out at the conference was that people really need and companies need to really focus on what's your story. So I'm gonna start off and share a little bit of my story. And in 1998, I set up a company called PMB Marketing at a suggestion by a managing partner at a CPA firm that I worked with. And when I asked him if there was a reason that he suggested I do this, he mentioned to me that he had some clients who needed some marketing assistance and he wanted to offer my help to them, but he thought it would be wiser if I set up my own company so that the marketing initiatives didn't come through the firm. So back in 1998, I set up a firm, PMB Marketing. We started to gain traction, I was having a lot of success. And then as I call it the board of life, which we're all walking on these days, um, the spin of the wheel ended up um, put placing me into a situation where I really needed to make the CPA for my primary focus. Um, we had some medical issues that came through the family at that point in time. And I really wanted to stay focused on ensuring that I was delivering exceptional results for the firm. So as a result, I placed my uh, PMB marketing on the shelf and went back to the CPA firm. And up until about five years ago was director of marketing for this regional firm. Uh, the reason that I'm telling you a little bit about this is as you're hearing a little bit more about my story, and this is what I want you to consider as we're starting to build your story and your personal brand, it's important that people understand your, the walk that you've had in life. Um, obviously, um, everyone's story is going to be a little bit different, but it helps people engage and get to know and also brings point to light as to why your story really matters. So we're going to continue through this. As I mentioned to you, I, um, I started this company, PMB Marketing. I had been a director at a public accounting firm, and I'd done that for 25 years. Um, and as I left that firm, um, this will pretty much give you a little bit of overview of what I do. Um, but at the firm, I did everything from newsletters to website um, marketing. And in addition, I did onboarding for new employees. And as a result of that, I landed into this latest niche that I really enjoy and that I'm quite successful at. So let's get a little bit further into this story. And the reason that I'm doing this session today is because I've had tremendous success helping people reposition themselves to increase their income and land their next career opportunity. So whether that career opportunity is in within a firm that you're currently with or one that you're hoping to join, um, I have a lot of different tricks and suggestions that I'm going to share with you that I think will help you in that career um, path as you move forward. So um, today I really want to help you focus and write your story. So I really want you to start tapping into some of the unique values that you offer and your superpowers. I also want to encourage you to reach out and secure testimonials and recommendations from people that you've worked with or done project work with. Um, because I'd like you to add them into your LinkedIn profile, and I'm going to show you how to do that as we go through this. But more importantly, the primary focus of today's session is really, I want you to clarify your vision and your goals. 
because when people come to work with me, until they have identified what type of an opportunity they're looking for, it's really challenging to find success. So we don't go to step two until step one's identified. So when you said, well, what are you talking about there? I mean, I have some people who are working 70 hours a week that are looking for a 40 hour a week job. I also have some people who they're at this stage of the game where they're like, you know what? I really don't need all the politics in an office. I'd love to work. I'd love to be able to work remote. I've had people who have been unemployed for 18 months in the pharma industry and have been able to come back, work with me and get positioned um, and go on to become directors at, 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 leading, um, at leading pharmaceutical companies. So there's all different reasons that people are working with me. But um, one of the things that we've been able to do is as long as we have their um, you know, clarity on their goals and objectives, everyone I work with has been able to be placed within 90 days within a job. So, and I think that's why um, I think it's super important that before you even begin the search, you start to think about what does that dream job look for you like for you? So I'm going to mention some tools today. This is just a tip sheet on some of the different ones that I'm going to be mentioning. LinkedIn, Reference USA. There's a design software um, platform out there called Canva.com. Uh, Word Cloud is going to help us identify some keywords for you. Um, I also recommend that people look at best places to work. Um, the Small Business Administration, if you've decided maybe you really want to start your own company at this stage of the game, go to their website. Um, you'll be able to find some, uh, a vast library of tools that will help you explore that. And then the other thing is SCORE, and that's re um, senior retired corporate executive officers who volunteer their time to help individuals and mentor them who want to start up a business. So often when we start out working um, together with clients, one of the things that we ask is what companies do you want to target yourself for? So, and people might say, but w what's the big deal on that? Like, Pat, I just need a job. I'm a controller and I need another job as a controller. Well, it depends on what stage of the game you're in. I mean, you might be looking for just a career opportunity for the next three years, for the next 10 years, or, you know, maybe this is the final chapter in your professional career. So the reason that it matters is because the companies that you select are important. And it also matters as to the titling on the positionings that you're targeting. So with that being said, if there's companies that you're interested in gaining opportunities with, this is a perfect time to look and say, what contacts do I currently have at that company? And would those contacts be willing to help me with introductions? So uh, we, we do, do a deep dive on that when we're engaging with each other, um, clients and I. The other thing that I recommend to all of my clients is take a look at the best places to work and the companies that have made those rankings within the last three to five years. And the reason I say this is because I've actually done the nomination process from the company standpoint. So I filled in that application and if anyone's done it, it takes about 20 to 25 hours worth of an individual's time to gather the details that they're looking for, for this evaluation. But more importantly, the reason we go to best places to work is because I saw firsthand that these aren't just, um, awards that are handed out um, without thorough background and confirmation from the employees who work at that firm. I know that each of our employees, when I did these nominations, was sent a response and a questionnaire that they responded to and that all of those responses were kind of confidential and that the employers never did um, find out who said various comments. And at the time that the comments are being submitted, everything is confidential. So when I suggest going to best places to work to look for your next company, it's because why not? I mean, these, com these companies have already been vetted by hundreds of thousands of employees. So I say go to best places to work, see if there's a company in the niche that you're interested in pursuing and take a, a deep dive and position yourself for some of them. So these are some of the key elements that I look for when I'm building people's professional brands. So I used to say a good professional profile and resume, but after COVID-19, I think it's really going to need to be great. I don't know what's going to happen, as none of us do, um, with recalls and when people are brought back into their employers. But there probably will be some people who maybe the companies won't be able to 
navigate through these troubled waters and maybe they'll be downsizing significantly. So you really need a professional profile and resume that's gonna make you stand out. And in that, I need you to have a well-crafted story and give that professional, uh, the professional story of some accomplishments that you've had. Um, and as we go through this, we'll get into that a little bit more. The other thing I, we always look at is the engagement that you're having with your existing connections. So there may be people in companies that you'd like to work for, but there may be peers of yours in other companies. And it's a great time right now to reach out to them and just to have those one-on-one -on -one off talks and just to say, you know, how are you doing? How are things going? You know, how are you feeling about this layoff position, um, this layoff opportunity? Are you hearing anything in the marketplace? Just pick their brains, let them know that you're interested. Um, ask them to keep you in mind if they have hear of anything along the lines of something you might be interested in. But it's a great time right now just to reconnect um, with those connections and uh, have, those have those open lines of communication because, you know, people are happy to refer people they know, like, and trust to others for jobs. Turns out that 63% of all referrals by um, person to person for employment opportunities end up turning out with a um, higher opportunity. So one, that's one of the things I want you to look at. The other thing is, um, you know, LinkedIn is a great vehicle where you can share your expertise and your knowledge. And so I want you to start thinking of ways that maybe you can possibly um, create some content to do that. So why LinkedIn? Before we start this, I want once again to notify everyone that I'm the, I am not an employee of LinkedIn. I get no compensation from LinkedIn. Um, but why LinkedIn? Um, why am I such a big fan? Because it has helped each of my clients get a job within 90 days. And they collectively have increased their income by over $2 million in the last two years. So it's loaded with significant opportunities, which I'll be happy to show you as we go through. But in addition to that, we know that as of January of this year, LinkedIn had 700 million users in over, in over 200 countries and territories. So if we take a look at that, back in September of 2019, 160 seven million users were in the US, and 40% of all users say they visit LinkedIn weekly. 81% of all your prospects and potential employers will view your LinkedIn profile before meeting with you. So if you're in a sales role, you know, your LinkedIn profile really needs to shine. If you're positioning yourself for a new employment opportunity, once again, your profile needs to shine. Even if you're just trying to move up from a manager to a vice president at the existing company that you're with. So in February of 2020, I know it seems like a lifetime ago um, before this uh, virus came to town, every seven seconds someone was being hired off LinkedIn. And you say, Pat, the job market was flush, but it's not anymore. Here's what I'm going to tell you. This economy is going to be bouncing back. I, I have no doubt in that. But the thing is that if we know that in 2020, every seven seconds someone was being hired off LinkedIn, why wouldn't you use LinkedIn as your primary tool for career opportunities? So if we look at LinkedIn by the numbers, 30 million companies have LinkedIn profiles and they listed over 20 million job opportunities. And this was back in February of 2020. So we know that LinkedIn profiles with professional headshots get 14 times more professional views. So if you currently still have a bobblehead in your LinkedIn profile, if you do nothing else for me after watching this session, I want you to please go make sure that you get a decent professional profile photo that looks like you. So you say, Pat, I don't even know, like, what, what, like, we all hate getting our photos taken. I understand that. But what I'm telling you is right now at home, you can go against a wall that doesn't have too much activity going on it. And you can stand in front of it and take a photo, have someone take a photo of you with your iPhone. And here's what I want to tell you, that that professional headshot, it needs to resemble you now. It's not a headshot that maybe you took in, um, depending, uh, maybe it was your, you know, I, I recently talked to a fella and he had one from like, it was obvious a uh, Christmas dining table. Um, this is not what we want to put out on our LinkedIn profile. This is a professional profile opportunity to show you in your best light. So I want you to think about that as we talk about um, profiles and photos going forward. Um, the other thing that I wanted to share with you is that 95% of recruiters are using LinkedIn regularly. So here we go again. There, whether um, or not your company is going to be in existence at the end of this, um, probably most of them will be, but there will be some small businesses that won't. 
So let's get you, let's get you positioned um, for the next career opportunity. So right now I'd like to take you to um, do a active online dive into LinkedIn. So if you bear with me a minute until I am able to get to that point in time, I'd appreciate it. Okay, so I'm gonna take you over to my LinkedIn profile um, because to me, that's where this all needs to continue from. So let me just drag this tool out of the way and we're gonna to go to my profile. So I'm, I'm trusting by now that you all have a LinkedIn profile and if you don't, I'm gonna encourage that you do you get one and you go in and you register for one. It's easy enough, just go to linkedin.com and sign yourself up for a profile. Um, I want to take you quickly across this dashboard, um, your LinkedIn dashboard. And what I would like to do is just do a refresher for you of some of these key elements. So if we go to the home page on LinkedIn, what you're going to see is the center section is a news feed. So these are first level connections or topics of interest or companies that I'm following. This is the news that they're promoting today. And this gets updated every moment, right? So if I go and I look at some of the posts on here, it's going to tell me how long ago the post was shared and it's still building up my, um, my homepage right now. So I'm gonna let it continue to do that. But this center section here, I wanna notify you that that's, I call that our newsfeed section. Um, and what I want you to know is if you're looking to become a thought leader, um, LinkedIn is an excellent, uh, provides an excellent platform for you to do that. So, you know, you can go and you can click on this and share a post. And if you're going to share a post, I would keep it probably 200 words or less. Keep it short and sweet and concise. Um, it's going to allow you to add a photo to it. If you're going to write something a little bit more extensive, um, then I would like you to go and do it as an article. And on both of these posts, one of the things that I'd like you to do is to include some type of a photo or an image with your post. Because we know as viewers that um, post with um, photos tend to get a much higher rate of um, read. So I'm going to take you across this home page, and this over here is going to be a snapshot of who you of um, your profile, and it's just going to be a short cameo. But one of the things here it allows you to do is to see who's viewed your profile, right? So if we're to if I was to click on to this, okay, it's telling me that I've had 98 views in the last 90 days. But it also down here took you to different people that have actually viewed my profile. So most of you probably know Ralph, he's a member of the Irish Chamber. Um, but the other interesting piece is three people have viewed my profile in a private mood. So that's not giving me too much detail. Patricia Coggan reached out to me the other day um, and she reached out to connect with me on LinkedIn and Based on our backgrounds, I recently connected with her. But see how it tells you Ralph was at my profile three hours ago and Patricia was there two days ago. These people who are in the um, private mode, it's, I call it a stealth mode. I'm gonna show you how to put yourself in stealth mode and why you might wanna go ahead and do that. But let's go up here to this all profile views. So even if they're coming in stealth mode, they could be at one of these companies, you know, um, because these are different people who have viewed my profile and this is how they've come through. So I just wanted to show you that little piece of it because you are then, like Patricia had reached out to me, I looked at her profile and I thought, oh, she would make a good connection and she had asked to connect. So, you know, after reading her profile, I uh, reached out and accepted her connection and then I sent her, thanks for reaching out, let's, you know, and connecting. Welcome to my network. Um, the other thing is LinkedIn is gonna give you some different ideas here on how to engage with your feed and connect with different people and update your profile. But I'm gonna take you through that right now. So we're gonna go back on this and we're gonna go back to the homepage. Um, hopefully we're not gonna to take too long. It won't, yeah, but it's not freezing. Um, what I want you to tell you is if we were not recording right now, LinkedIn would tell me how long ago um, Bruce Tolgan posted this. So you know how relevant and how timely things are. But another area here is post. 
So if I was to go and share someone's post online in that community, which I did Goldie's, um, it's telling me right now that 34 people in my connections also viewed this post. So you're wondering, well, Pat, what are my people, even, what would people I'm connected to even want to see? What's relevant for them right now? So here, you know, the next article, 13 people saw. Um, the Wawa looking for employees, three saw, 42 saw. Here's the thing, it, views don't count. You can't put money in the bank for views. But we'll view, what, what views will tell you is whether or not people were engaging with some of the content you were selling. So the money is all in messaging and we'll get to that next. Well, along this line. So I'm gonna go back to the homepage just because I wanna show you some other things here. Now, when I go to this homepage, um, the other piece of information I wanna share with you is people are like, well, what am I gonna share? Well, LinkedIn's already giving you articles right here. Who's hiring now? Like how relevant is that? So right now it's telling you, and if I move my thing, it may tell me, uh, it's because I've got so many um, options open, but it's telling me right now that this is the top news. Now, four hours ago, here's the official updates on the virus, right? So this is all coronavirus related. But if you went to look in, well, what's, what are companies talking about? You know, um, what is going on down in this area? So, you know, with the news out last night that Amazon wants us to stop shopping on their site, um, and they're not encouraging us to continue to fill our shopping cart, um, you know, it tells you 26,000 people found that interesting. But when you say to me, well, Pat, like, you know, what's really relevant for me to share? Well, maybe if you're a financial advisor, this might be a good thing for you to share. Maybe if you're a banker, managing your finances during a pandemic. And, and you say, well, Pat, how do I even know that that's worth sharing? This is key. I don't want you to share anything that you don't think that is relevant. You really need to be authentic on this platform. And you may need to make sure that you endorse anything that you share because it's almost like you're putting your stamp of approval on it. So if I was to go in and read this article and I found it to be worthy of my, me sharing, then all I have to do is hit the share button. So this is, um, you know, it's taking me for replays. It's also taking me to um, some other offshoots on this. So I'm not gonna share this at this point in time, but I just wanted to show you that that's how you'd go about sharing it, okay? So we're gonna go back to home. And on this, the other piece of um, your profile that I want you to take a look at right now, you're not gonna see it on mine because I have it hidden, but, oops, it was jumpy, okay. Um, but at the very bottom section of this homepage, right, we're back on the homepage, very bottom section is how you get into the help center for LinkedIn. And why is this important? Because if you're a little rusty on LinkedIn or there's something specific you're trying to figure out how to do, you go to this help session, this is such a vast um, act, uh, tool and library for information on how to do anything on LinkedIn. And you can just go right through it and it'll take you directly where you need to be to get the answers that you're hoping for. So we're gonna close that out. The other piece above that section, right, is you have, these are different hashtags that they're thinking might be relevant to me. Um, it's also asking if, um, suggesting other people that I might want to follow on the platform. But when you go and look at your profile, one of the things that you're going to see on your homepage is there's going to be a section um, that, that um, has viewers also viewed. So I want to show you how to get rid of that on your profile photo. But before we do that, let's go in to privacy and settings. And the reason I want to take you in via this mode it's because usually when I start working on updating people's LinkedIn profiles, it's really one of the first places I go to. So let's say that I'm working with a CPA and he wants to get a robust LinkedIn profile out there. But one of the things that he's concerned about is he doesn't want people seeing his connections because he truly believes that that's his pot of gold. So if you're in an industry where you find that your connections um, are maybe 80%, your business contacts that you're currently doing business with, and you're fearful that you don't have a strong enough relationship with them, that um, someone could come along and snag them, then by all means, feel free to go hide your connections. But what I wanna show you is in order to do that, this is um, who can see your connections. 
So in my world, anyone can see my connections, but if I was that accountant who didn't want to share who I'm connected with because I didn't want people to know what companies I might be working with, then I would change it to only you. Now notice when I do it, that little saved came up, right? So that's how you know your profile settings are being changed. But we're gonna go back to my connections, right? Because I really would like any of my connections to be able to see this. Then I want you to look at the one right below it. Viewers of the profile also viewed. So if you look at your existing profile page right now, on the right hand area, you're gonna see a, a display box and it says viewers of your profile also viewed. And I always have um, anyone looking for employment turn this off because these are other people on LinkedIn who may also um, have the same skill sets as you. So if a recruiter is coming in and you have this profile section up, then what's to stop them or prevent them from saying, oh, you know what? This person didn't come up in my, in my search. Why don't I go out and check them out? They seem to have the same skills as Pat. Maybe they'd be another great candidate for this job. So I have people turn this off because I don't think that it needs to be on your profile. I don't think you need to be promoting other people that have similar tendencies to you. This also makes sense if you're a small business owner because you wouldn't want other marketers appearing on your business profile, on your own personal profile page, right? Because what's to stop anyone who's looking, for you, looking at you for business to go out and reach out to them? So I hope that makes sense to you as why I have this turn off. These work just like a toggle. As I said, when you toggle it, then it goes and it updates my profile. But once again, because I don't want that, um, you know what, I'll leave that on because I wanna show you what that looks like. But I just want you to know that that is the section um, where you're going to uh, toggle on and off, right? So once again, it's right here under privacy on this page. You know, there's an account section. There's your privacy section. There's also a communication section that allow you to do some um, communication uh, techniques within that. So I just wanted you to be very well aware of those things. So viewers of my profile also viewed, you see how it's changed to yes? I am gonna leave that on because, and then I'll change it at the end because this is where I'm telling you when I go and look at my profile now, um, competitors will come up on that. So. Let's go down this just one other section here that I wanna show you today. And this is um, viewing options. Do you remember when we look, went to see who had been on my LinkedIn page and some of them came in in private mode? So I called it stealth mode. So this is where you can go in and you can say, okay, if you, Pat, if you're viewing somebody else's profile, do you want it to read your name or do you wanna go in as anonymous? So once again, if I change that to anonymous, now, when I go and view someone's page, I'm gonna come in as someone viewed you in a private mood. So LinkedIn is gonna take you down to the very bottom after it does each of those things. But um, I'm gonna jump back up here on my page uh, because right now I know that it's saved. So um, it tells you right here that selecting private profile characteristics um, will disable who viewed you in your profile, okay? so. The other thing to here is um, it may um, also, if you uh, go to upgrade to a premium for LinkedIn, you may be able to see who the anonymous people were, but everything I'm showing you today should cost you nothing. There's no added expense to it. Um, and I recommend most of my clients to just start with the basic LinkedIn. Um, you know, if you wanna get into the, some of the sales tools or some of the enhanced features with a higher level, of LinkedIn, then that's fine. Um, but I just wanted to show you that. So if you did wanna go in in stealth mode, you could just, as I said, change that to private. But because I'm a true believer that LinkedIn is about um, connecting and sharing um, insights with people, I've changed that back to uh, myself. So LinkedIn already saved it. I know that because it automatically is saving in my section. So let's go back here and let's go to my view my profile. Let's hit that section next. And in this section, I really wanna show you how to go in and update your profile. Now, one of the things I'd like you to do right off the head, right off the bat, is go to edit your public profile URL, all right? And the reason I'm asking you to do this is because right now you're 
I would imagine on a lot of people's URL right now, after your name, it's going to have miscellaneous numeric and alpha characters. I want you to go in and edit that. And it's going to allow you to back out those characters and then you can put in an identifying feature. So you see, I added marketer, right? And your custom URL can be up to 100 characters. So, I mean, you know, if you're a CPA, as long as your license is active, you could put, if your name is John Smith, you could put .cpa or you could put CPA. Same thing if you're a financial planner. As long as your licenses are active, you can add licensing in there, right? But the reason I want you to do that is because when we go and build a LinkedIn, um, your, I'm sorry, when we go and build your resume, I'm going to want you to snag that custom URL because we want to make sure that we include that on any applications or resumes that you're putting in. So um, it's telling me I've successfully have updated that session. But let's go in and let's go to my um, profile again. And we're going to go view profile. And the re what I'd like to start off with here is I want to take a look at the photos. Now, I have a lot of people who, um, when they look at their, their profile photo, they're like, I don't even know how that even got there. So here's what I want to tell you. Within each section, there's a little pencil. And as soon as you click upon the pencil, LinkedIn's going to say, hey, here we are. What do you want to change? So this section up here, right, is called your banner. Now, if you work at a large company and you have a marketing team, or even if you work at a smaller company and you're using a marketer and, you know, on uh, a consultant, um, have them put together a LinkedIn profile banner for you. But uh, what I wanted to share with you is I shared a link to uh, a resource and it's called canva.com. And for 30 days, you can go on and you can build your own for 30 days for free. You can build your own um, banner, your own headline banner. So I usually recommend that you don't do that until you're ready to do it because you only have the 30 days with whatever G, uh, email account you set up with them. So talking about email accounts, let's get to this uh, number one point. I want you to set up a Gmail account or an email account that you only use for career opportunities. And the reason I want you to do it that way is because we are inundated with email ongoing on so many at, at so many of our email addresses. So the reason that I have the clients I'm working with set up a separate one that is just for professional is because then that is something that you're checking with and you're going to be much more responsive. You're not going to miss an email from a recruiter or an HR manager trying to schedule an appointment or an interview with you because you're going to know and you're going to have that email account set up with some type of alert system that as opportunities are coming to you, you're being immediately responsive. You know, it's all about leaving those great impressions, right? So um, I know I, I'm uh, probably speaking a little bit too much on this piece, but I just think it's really important because as I said, I know people have hundreds and some people have thousands of emails on their email list and I would hate for you to miss an opportunity. So that's one of the tips that we that we use when um, we're trying to position someone. So let's take a look at this um, LinkedIn profile. Now, obviously your first name is gonna be whatever name you're using in public. Um, you know, obviously Pat's not my full name um, or my first name, but um, that's, how, that's how I'm known in industry. So um, if you have a pseudo name that you're using, um, you know, you could put that in there or you could put your name and then in parentheses put Bud or whatever. Um, in there. Um, if you have a designation, you know, if you have your CPA, if you have your JD, um, the, there is, as you see, there's no place to put a designation. So the way to capture that is after your last name, add a comma and add the certification that you have. Now, just a reminder, if you're putting a license certification in there, your license has to be active. If five years down the road, you inactivate your license, then you need to remove that from your profile. This has to be, and this will tie in with any of the licensing bureaus in the state. So please keep that in mind. So let's get back to your profile photo. And people say, um, Pat, I don't even know how I changed it. Or what, you know, how, how does that happen? Once again, LinkedIn is making it very, um, very easy to go and update, it, update your profile. And why is this important? 
Well, because I know a number of people right now are sporting beards. And I think it's really important that your profile match what um, you might look like when you come in for an interview. So if you were to say, okay, I'm gonna take out that, you can delete the photo, change the photo and upload a photo. So if I was to delete this photo, which just for the sake of time, I'm not gonna do that. But it's so easy to do. You just hit delete. It says what, what file are you gonna add up? It allows you to crop it if you want to. You can filter it, adjust it accordingly. You can move it around, you know, if I want to go more to this side, I want to go more to that side to stand out. Um, I just tend to go center view um, because I want to make it easy for people to identify me, right? So let's just get out of the um, profile piece um, for the photos and let's go and look at some of the more interesting content on here. So this next section is called your headline area. This really needs to tell who you serve, who, you know, what your specialty is and who you serve. This is what needs to be in this headline area. You get 120 characters and spaces unless you're using your iPhone. And if you do it on your iPhone, if you're able to master this on the iPhone, you do end up getting a little bit larger of a feel for um, that headline description. But just make sure you save it because once again, if you don't save it, nothing is staying, right? Your current position's already going to be in there. I can't tell you how many headlines might um, have, uh, you know, the name of the company that you're currently working at. It doesn't need to be there, okay? It's already going to be here. You can put it in as your, um, in your employer field. Your headline here really needs to focus in. It's pretty much your story, who you are and what you offer and who you serve, right? So keep that in mind going through this. So it also allows you to put your current position. I recommend putting your education up there. Um, you know, obviously the country you're gonna, anything with the blue is mandatory. You can put in a postal code and then you can also add a suggested location. So I may live in media, but I want it to show up that I'm in the um, greater Philadelphia area. It also requires you to put an industry in there. What is the industry? What is the niche that you're into? Each of these have drop down boxes. So depending upon what industry you're into, um, you know, that would make sense for you, right? So as, you know, founder of my company, my background really is strong in marketing. Um, my expertise comes from getting a degree from Drexel University in marketing, and then going on to be a marketing director in professional services for 25 years. So here's a critical element, and you might be surprised, but I can't tell you how many clients I work with. And when we go and look at their LinkedIn profile and we go to their email address, right? You get to add an email address. It's their old employer. So anybody who is emailing them, the emails are going to the old employer. So this is another section where I want you to take that professional Gmail account or email account, whichever provider you decide to use. And please make sure that you're updating it within your LinkedIn profile. So that URL that I had you change and customize, that's coming up in your contact information, right? Also, the phone, you can add in a work, a home, or a mobile phone. The birthday information, I don't share that. So, excuse me, I use LinkedIn really as a professional tool, and I don't think it's necessary to recognize people on their birthdays. Um, that's just my personal approach. If you'd like to do something different, then feel free to. Um, and so after you made those changes and updates, you can just hit apply and then that will take care of that. So once we get through that section, we're gonna go into the about section. Once again, you're gonna click on this pencil. This used to be called the summary section, right? So here it is. But now LinkedIn has called it your about section. A couple things I wanna show you on this. Let's go back to that just for a minute. Notice when you look at my profile, there's only gonna be three lines that are gonna appear in this about section, right? What I decided to do as part of my ninja trick is I've decided that, you know, if someone's coming to my profile page and they wanna connect with me, I wanna make it easy as possible for them, right? So what I have done is I've added in how to get in touch with me. So what I need to do here is go add in my email address because people can either call me or they can, um, email me at Pat Buchanan p and Marketing, or if they wanted to go to my website or they want to schedule a meeting with Calendarly, I could add that in there and it makes it seamless for people to be able to reach out to me. 
you want to make this as simple as possible for people. And then I start off with what do I do? So let's take a look at this. Your LinkedIn page, you're going to gather maybe, maybe five seconds. Like people are going to come look at you and say, is it even worth reading further, right? So when they go and say, well, maybe they're looking for a career coach, right? And they go and they say, oh, well, wait a minute. Here's a, she's a career coach, okay, and she helps people in organizations. And uh, let's see, what does she do here? So notice how I've set up my LinkedIn profile page, and you can do this too, right? I've come up with some headers, and I got this tip off of John Nemo, who is another LinkedIn guru out there in the um, universe. Um, he actually ran a presentation out at the social media marketing world conference that I was at in San Diego, um, but I've been following him for a couple of years. So anyway, do you see how John has said, like, Pat, make it easy. Tell them what you do and what makes you unique. So put in some of your wins, put in um, some information that you can use, quantitative information that's going to maybe possibly make you stand out a little bit more, right? Here's my service offerings. What are the things that I'm focused on? And this was the other piece, and I thought this was interesting. What are other people saying? So actually, these are like some of the testimonials and the recommendations that I had suggested to you. Like how neat is that? So if someone is looking for a new job and they're looking for a career coach and someone to help them along the way, what better than in my um, About Me section to let them know that, right? So we're going to go back up here. And, you know, here we are changing everything on our profile, right? And I'll get to that back to that in one second. But do you remember when we talked initially uh, about three minutes ago about people also viewed? So check this out. I had mine, I toggled it back to yes, right? But when I work with employees, I have them toggle it to no. Because if someone's looking for a marketer, what's to stop them from reaching out to another marketer on this page? You know, um, they might say, oh, I didn't even think about, you know, possibly reaching out to Nora. Maybe Nora could help me with this job too. Hi, Nora. Um, Nora Bowery is another Irish Chamber member. Um, great person. She and I are not in the same line of business. We both do different things. But because enough of our profiles cross over that people want you to know, well, these are other individuals who do something, something similar to Pat. So one of the uh, things that we're gonna do on that, just really quickly, is I wanna go back up to that settings show and I want to go down to that section and we're gonna turn that off because I want you to see the differential when you're going back in and taking a look at that. So it's under privacies and we're going to go down, viewers of my profile also viewed. And we're gonna turn that to no. All right, and there LinkedIn has saved it. And then if I go and refresh my LinkedIn page and we go back to my home, that section should be removed. In an ideal world, it will be gone. Um, but I just wanted to take you through that and show you the differential and why it would make sense that I wouldn't want that up on my page and you probably don't want that on yours either. So see, now we're back on my page and that information is gone. And what LinkedIn has done is they said, Pat, here's some um, new skills, uh, maybe some LinkedIn learning videos that you'd like to watch. Um, and they've taken it along those lines. The other piece to this is you can hyperlink. So if I had a website, if you have a company, you can hyperlink your website. Or you, people can call directly from this. Um, if they're on a mobile phone, make it easy. 80% of all views are now going mobile. So, you know, you want to make sure anything that you're doing from a digital platform has mobile availability to it. So then we're into this feature section. LinkedIn gives you six different options in here. It can be a video upload. It can be a post that you've put in. Um, something that you've got engagement on or comments on. Um, this is my dashboard. Once again, this tells me how many people viewed my profile. We took a look at that. This also told me, um, this is a different view of this. So in the last week, I've come up in 34 different, this is just a week's time frame, 34 different um, searches. So you can look and say, well, who is finding me here? So these are people from different areas who have searched my name and this is their background of where they came from. So it's always interesting if you're interviewing for a company, you know, you'd wanna see that they've actually come to your LinkedIn profile, right? They might come in stealth mode, but if they've searched for you, you'd know that that company's um, 
uh, HR manager came to take a look at you. It also tells me like what types of roles do these searchers have? Like the people who have come to me in the last week, what was their role in their company? So that also makes it very interesting. Um, and uh, after we get back and take it back into our profile, um, which I'm just gonna go, I always find it's just easier to go home to get into it. And we're gonna go, and actually, it's easier to go to your disk and then go profile. Um, so we're gonna go down this page, we're gonna look at some of these other sections and why they'd be relevant for you, right? Um, so here's different activities, and activities means these might be things that I've liked or I've shared or posts I've put out there. Um, here's where you start to put in your experience. So here's the key. Your LinkedIn resume, your LinkedIn profile should not be a replica of your resume. They should complement each other. On a resume, you might have, um, it may be reflective of uh, different accomplishments or things that you've done. What I want you to do on your LinkedIn profile is actually look for keywords for the types of positions that you're looking to um, gain employment in. So if I was to go out and look at career coaches um, or marketing people, um, you know, public relations strategies might be one of the skill sets that they're looking for. One of the new things that I'm recommending with people is we're not going back 30 years for um, who you've worked for. I'm really recommending you stay 15 to 20 years when you're putting your profile together. So here's the thing, no one knows um, your age, but a lot of people believe that because um, some people are getting older, that there's a true age issue out there for getting hired. And I'm gonna tell you that I've worked with people um, in their late 50s and 60s, and we're not finding that. And I think part of the reason that we're not finding it is because as we're building the profiles and we're building the resumes, we're making sure that the keywords and the relevant terms are included in those, those uh, materials. So I'm gonna tell you, as long as you're able to stay relevant in your industry, there really isn't too much of a struggle for you to be able to gain you know, another employment opportunity. So what I'm gonna tell you though, in addition is, I told you like, you don't really need to go back 30 years, but let's just look at mine. I did go back 30 years. And here's one of the things that I did with that. I've worked with CPAs forever. So as you'll be able to tell, like I started out at the Pennsylvania Institute of CPAs um, and ran continuing ed education programs for them throughout the state. And then I joined, you know, a CPA firm that then ended up splitting from another and whatnot. But here's what I want to tell you. I've left the Phillies on here because I had lots of different co-op opportunities with Drexel, but the Phillies lets people know that I like baseball. Like, I enjoy sports. So if you are going in stealth mode to check out an HR manager who may be interviewing you or a manager that you're scheduled to have an interview with, go to their profile, go down and look and see what types of things are they focused on. So I left the Phillies in there because it's a good conversation starter. The next thing on here is your education. So, you know, I've added in my high school because I was trying to build a community around that. Um, Drexel University, you know, um, I have that in there. You'll see where we're talking about the age issue and people being concerned that, you know, 30 years in business, I don't have in start years. When you put in your education, all they're requiring is the school that you went to, okay? I put in the field of study and the degree, but you see, once again, the only thing that's mandated in here by the asterisk is the school. So you could have multiple listings in here. Um, you know, if maybe I was a Ben Franklin fellow or I had something along those lines, I might add that in there. Um, you know, I was in different organizations at Drexel University, but I didn't, you know, expand upon them. Um, if I'm working with someone who recently graduated, once again, there's no reason to put in the year that you're graduating, right? Say you're two, three years out, but you have tremendous experience and you've been a rising star. Why limit yourself by saying you're only out of college for four years, right? Just leave the college that you've gone to. Let's look at the successes that you've had and go forward with that. The next section we're gonna get into is the skills and endorsements. So endorsements are no longer a thing with LinkedIn, um, but back in the day they were, and people could endorse me for different things. But here's what I want to tell you. Keywords are a really important part of you building out your digital profile. 
So keywords are the words that are going to appear in the job descriptions that companies post, and they also should be found in your resume and on your LinkedIn profile. So how do you go about putting in keywords when so many of these fields are limited? Well, LinkedIn gives you that opportunity. And they'll come to you and they'll say, okay, Pat, you can put 50 skills in here. So just so you all know, there are 50 skills you can add into here. So if I go and I take a look at a profile or a, a posting for a job that I want, and maybe it says TV or something along those lines, and I have no TV experience, okay, then I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna populate for that keyword. However, if I was, um, if someone's looking for a marketer to join their firm, and they're looking for someone who has marketing management, marketing strategy, business development skills, do you see how these keywords are in my profile? They're gonna help me populate. Um, and when I say populate, they're gonna help me um, gain its attention and rankings in, um, in some of the search fields. So I want you to go in and I want you to take a look at your skills. Now, you see how here, my top two skills here are posted? If I go to add a new skill, LinkedIn is already saying, well, Pat, you've done some things where you worked with seniors. Like they've gone through and they know me because the analytics on this are incredible. They're tracking everything I'm liking, I'm sharing, or that I'm involved with. So um, here are other key terms that, that, you know, integrated marketing. These are all terms you might find um, a career person is looking for. But let's just say I went in here and I wanted to put accounting. See, as I start to type accounting, they're already, their software has already gone through and said, oh, well, these might be some other things that you haven't added that you might want to add. So look at all these other terms under accounting that I could add in if I had that skill set, right? Here's what I'm going to tell you. LinkedIn ranks different things. The analytics will pick up as long as you have the skill in there. If it's a skill, you can't create a new skill. It, well, you can, but it just is not gonna help you in any of your rankings. So I just wanna take you down through this. Um, and that is the whole piece on the skills. Now, um, I also wanted to show you as we go through this, um, uh, recommendations. We're gonna come to this recommendation session. And since I've just reduced the size of my skills, it's bumped me up. The rec this uh, recommendation section allows you to reach out to connections that you have on LinkedIn and ask them for a recommendation. So if I was to go and to do that, um, you know, I'm going to ask for a recommendation. Once again, you use this pencil to, to help you navigate through all these fields. Um, now this is interesting because it took me to manage my recommendations instead of asking. So if it turned out that I wanted Maura to expand upon, Maura just came back to me she just came to me for more advice um, because she just had another career opportunity reach out to her um, and she'd only been in the one we had positioned her in 13 months ago. And this one offered her a significant um, career jump. And she came back to me and we uh, helped her navigate whether or not it was a good move for her or not. But say I wanted to go to Mora and ask her to update the recommendation. Then I can ask for a revision to that recommendation. But really what I had wanted to take you through was how do you go and ask for a recommendation? So the pencil point then is gonna allow you to ask for um, updates to the recommendation. To actually ask for a recommendation, you need to click on the term. So let's say right here, we're gonna ask for a recommendation and they say, well, who do you wanna ask? And I'm gonna put in Alana. So I'm gonna put in Alana Barry and they're gonna say, well, how do you know Alana? And you go to the Dropbox. And I'm going to say, um, Alana worked with me, but we worked in different companies, right? And um, we could have been students together. She could, I, she could have mentored me. Um, but anyway, I'm going to say that we worked together at different companies. So then it says, well, what company were you at at the time? So I'm going to say PMB Marketing, and I'm going to go next. And it automatically puts together the email for you to send, the message for you to send to Alana on LinkedIn asking her if she'd write a recommendation. So I would customize this. Obviously, you're not gonna just default to what LinkedIn is putting in there. You're going to say, Alana, um, it was great putting together the webinar for landing a position after COVID-19. Would you be kind enough to write a recommendation 
on the presentation and the reception by the members. And then I would hit send. You know, obviously I'm going to sign Pat and hit send. But recommendations, I mean, this is a perfect time for you to be out looking for recommendations. Why? Because a potential employer might want to see, is anybody recommending you? Like, have you received recommendations? Um, say you worked with someone, a couple different people on different project teams. Like, how great is that to get an endorsement for a future employer that, you know, your leadership skills on this project were exceptional, you know, and we couldn't have had those results without you. These are the types of things that, you know, can help you make stand, help you, you stand out a little bit more. Now, we're going to go into accomplishments. And what I want you to know within this section is if you don't have an accomplishment section, it's up at the very top. You can add additional sections up in the top of this profile. Um, let me see if it is still up there online. So you can go to the add a profile section. So this allows you to go down through here. All right, so if you've had volunteer experiences, you could add a section there. Here are skills, accomplishments, additional information. If you're multi, if you're bilingual, you could add that into it. But let's go back down to that. And I'm just gonna show you how I handled this. And what, one of the things I was looking to do is, I've done a lot of teaching. So what I started to do was I added in some of the programs that I've developed and designed for Penn State Brandywine, for the Pennsylvania Institute of CPAs, for Temple University's Greek community, um, for the Delaware County Bar Association. So I was trying to figure out, okay, I've done all this LinkedIn training for these companies and organizations. How do I go about adding that to my profile? So because I do do speaking, I thought, well, I'll handle that through courses because speaking is not one of the options, right? If you are on a board at an organization, you can add in organizations. So let's take a look at this. Um, if I, um, let's look at all the different things that you could add here. So in addition to adding courses, if you have publications, patents, specific projects that you worked on, um, you know, say you're a project manager at a manufacturing company, um, you know, you could list the type of project work that you've been involved with. If you've received any honors and awards, if you've been a 40 under 40 candidate, or you've received any other type of accolades, professional accolades, you know, even if it's company oriented accolades, like you've been a top seller, for the company, or you were the rising star of the year, you know, or you closed the most deals, um, add them in as honors and awards. It's just going to help um, elevate and uh, verify, you know, the stellar um, employee or individual or professional that you are, right? So let's take a look at organizations, right? So here are my organizations. So I'm gonna go into this. And I would like to show you when you go into organizations. So these organizations, they could be nonprofits, they could be professional associations. They could be, um, let's see, some of the others that I did some work with. Um, the Young Entrepreneurs Academy. These are all different organizations out there that I have actually done some activities with. Um, on, on most of them I, I have, I've held a number of board positions, um, but you know, others I've been a founder at. So you know, when you get to that organization section, by all means, add the different organizations that you were involved with. Um, you know, you go in and look at it, and here's the Accounting Association of Marketers. And if I wanted to go in and edit this, remember, every time you see that pencil, it's going to allow you to edit it. Um, some organizations I have an ongoing relationship with. So you know, once I left the accounting field. In 2016, I, um, I still attend this, um, these meetings, but I'm no longer a member of the Accounting Association of Marketing. Um, I was a founding member of our Philadelphia chapter, so that's in there. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that that is pretty much how you could go in and build out some of the additional activities. Because, you know, most employers are looking for people who are actively engaged in their community and in their profession. So if you haven't had the time because you're working 70 hours a week, now might be a good time to identify an organization or two that you might get interested in working with going forward. So then down the bottom of my profile, you'll see different interests of firms that I might be following. So, um, and how many members are within that group. So, you know, Forbes, they have, you know, 13 million. Um, SAP has a million, almost 2 million. Um, the Irish Chamber right now, they have 212 members. So these are just different in, um, organizations that I'm currently following. So that's how you'd go about updating your LinkedIn profile. So now that we've done the profile, let's go on to messaging. 
because this is where the money is. So I didn't share this in the initial program on um, Wednesday this week, but I just sat through another session and um, a webinar and I, I'm buying into this. So messaging is, allows you to have direct one-on-one -on -one relationships with any of your contacts, right? You have to be a connection to them. So um, if you're in the free mood, I believe if you're in a paid mode, you may have more opportunity. But let's just say that, like here is Shana. Um, she is a young entrepreneur individual, so I understand why her photo wouldn't be in there. But let's just say Parshel. Parshel does excellent videos. So if anybody's looking for someone to help you with a, a video, let's just say that I wanted to send her a nuke, right? So Parshel just launched a video um, opportunity for families to have families get engaged with their kids. And um, so I had sent out a uh, note to Parcel. But here's the thing. Remember how I told you there's no money in the bank on getting likes and shares. There really isn't, or posting. But there's money when you're trying to reach out and build relationships. So Parcel and I have a very good relationship. But if I was asking if, if she was Shana, and Shana wasn't a, a young entrepreneur individual, and I would say, Shana, you know, I just saw your LinkedIn profile. Hey, here's a, here's, if you're interested, let me know and I'll send you the link to 10 tips on how to improve your LinkedIn profile. Uh, just send back a yes and it's off to you. If you're not, no big deal. What I'm saying is this uh, messaging area allows you to reach out to individuals who you'd like to do business with to strengthen the relationship. Linda does LinkedIn training. She's up in um, Northern Jersey. Oh, well, that's interesting. But anyway, she said to me, um, we met last year at Social Media Marketing World and she thought we were competition. And I said, no, because I'm looking for someone in case I would ever get sick when I'm scheduled for a presentation. So she and I have been able to, you know, forge this relationship moving forward. She's doing some online training. I'm doing some um, online programs and I'm actually doing some coursework right now to offer that out to people. So I'm just saying like there's all these different opportunities uh, for people that I can reach out to and try and get some negotiations going with, like career opportunities. Like this one fella um, keeps reaching out to me because he thinks he can help me um, explore possibilities um, for a service that he provides. You know, this to me, like he's reached out three or four times to connect. Um, this is his fifth time. So coming through the fifth time saying, let's explore the possibilities, you know, that's fine. But this is not to be meant salesy. This is meant to be smooth, right? So messaging is a great opportunity if you're a financial advisor and you're not posting a lot. Um, it's a great opportunity to reach directly out to your contacts, um, to offer them um, insights into different market trends that might be going on and to, to build closer relationships with opportunities. So let's take a look at notifications. So notifications is, the, once again, the center column. And it's telling me right now that um, three hours ago, Lee posted this. And it, you know, 30 minutes ago, but it, it gives it to you moment by moment. But anyway, the interesting piece on this is if by chance um, someone had gotten a promotion, um, I could actually go out and say congratulations. So I know Mary recently got a promotion and I know she was on here and that's how I saw it. So, um, you know, if I go out here and find um, Mary, right? So uh, Mary Hansen just got this, just, um, just got a promotion, right? But LinkedIn let me know that Mary got a promotion. So I was early on in the game just because I happened to check out my notifications on an ongoing basis. So Mary posted like at 6.30 at night that she got gotten promoted. So I was able to go out and congratulate her and tell her to keep shining, right? And then what happens is anyone else who comments, I'm, let, I'm being told, well, these are other individuals who have commented on that um, post of Mary's, of what she went out and so it's letting other people know. So since we're all Irish Chamber members and Mary's an Irish Chamber member, if you get a chance, go out and give her a little salute and congratulate her on this latest accomplishment. But that's pretty much what notifications are for. Now, you see, it will tell me if it's somebody's birthday, but I don't play into that game um, for a number of reasons. But 
mainly because I look at this as totally a professional opportunity. Um, you know, if someone starts a new job, this is where you're going to see those things because that news feed that I mentioned to you about on your homepage, if we go back to the homepage, this news feed is constantly changing. See, there's something from Kate, but this news feed is constantly changing on you. So unless you're sitting here reading the news channel, you might miss opportunities. So at LinkedIn said, well, we're going to let you know that. And so they've set up this notification sort. It also says to me, well, here's something that's trending in digital marketing. Pat, you might want to go in and read that and then share it. So LinkedIn is always looking for ways to help me build engagement. So this is our walk through um, LinkedIn. If you have any questions after you go through LinkedIn, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to me. Once again, here again, I'm on the notifications tab and here's that help center. On other pages, you'll find it in the very bottom section. Um, the other piece to this is um, I did not go totally into the, uh, now that I'm thinking about this, you know what, I didn't take you in through the jobs tab. And this is a really, really interesting tab. So I wanna take you a deeper dive into that right now. Um, and maybe, I don't believe I have, it's starting to all run together, but let's just say that I'm out here on LinkedIn and I'm wondering, um, let's just say, I wanna, I wanna see who's hiring accountants. So this is a search I did a little earlier today. And I know in the greater Philadelphia area, there's 966 opportunities for accountants on LinkedIn. But what I wanna know really is who in the last week is looking. So I'm gonna put that in as one of the criteria that I wanna look at. So in the last week, LinkedIn's gonna populate and say, okay, Pat, 145 people in the last week have posted they're looking for accountants. And I'm gonna say, okay. And obviously you would fill in all of your little um, filters before you started this job, but I'm just trying to show you how to whittle it down, right? So bear with me. So say that I wanted to go in as a mid-senior level accountant. And let's say um, I wanna see what companies are out there and it's gonna tell me, and mid-seniors, um, it tells me if it's easy to apply, if there's under ton applicants, how many are in my network, are they a fair chance? But let's take a look at the employees. So this is giving me a list of different employees that are out there hiring in that arena. So if we went and took a look at all filters, right? Because if you're an accountant and you, you we're gonna hit clear, because right now it's got me on all filters, I'm gonna clear all the filters. I want you to take a look at this. So you wanna put in any job title up here, right, and search and you wanna put the area. So depending on what area you're in, that's where you'd wanna do it. If you were, um, if your child's watching this or you know, a son or daughter or niece or nephew and, you, and they're looking for an internship, if you put in internship, it's a county internship, but let's get to just internship. Okay, so internships in greater Philadelphia. This is going to tell me all the different companies that are hiring interns, right? So I'm gonna go back to the job filters. I'm gonna, um, so it tells me in the past week there were four and there's been 29. It's giving me here a list of who is hiring, but let's just cancel and clear all of this. I wanna show you this um, because we're, we all know young people who are looking for um, career opportunities. So we're just gonna go back to this jobs and we're gonna start fresh. And we're gonna go in here and put in internships. So the reason this is important and I wanted to show it to you, um, because even if your, your, your son, daughter, niece, nephew is going to college in Boston and they decide they don't wanna come home next year, this is where they're gonna look for internship opportunities. Now, one of the things I can share with you, if they're looking for an opportunity in finance, finance companies hire their interns and start interviewing in the fall for the summer prior um, to their internships coming on board. So in last September, most of the finance companies have already hired their internships. So it's a tip for you to let them know, start looking in August because they're posting for the following year. Um, so here we go, and these, here's a list of all the internships 
So they're telling me in the greater Philadelphia area, there's over 1,300 internships. So once again, I always say, okay, yeah, but how about in the past month? So they're telling me, okay, there's 564 in the past month. So this is why I want you to take a look at it, right? Because when I go and say, okay, in the last month, who put it out there? It's telling you TransUnion had one. They posted it a week ago. It's had 127 views. Um, and right now it has 27 applicants, but you can do this for every one of them. Now they're a promote it and that's how they've gotten top billing. See right here, we have promote it. So they're actually paying to have their internship opportunities posted. So if your son or daughter's looking for an internship opportunity, put it in there. Um, you know, here's an intern. Um, all of these types of things will be out there. Um, um, there's Borod, my friend Mark. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of opportunities on this tool. It also, believe it or not, helps um, high school kids. So I just did a career plan and um, LinkedIn training, career planning and LinkedIn training for my high school. And so we went out and looked at, um, you know, simple as elementary as a dishwasher. Now, most of you I know will be beyond this, but you know, you might have a 14 year old at home who's looking for a job this summer. And um, I want you to see that in the past month, there were 349 different dishwasher opportunities out there. So, and then once again, you can, you know, it, put it down by entry level, there's 252 of them. You know, who would think that there's mid senior level dishwashers? That, that surprises me, but um, you know, there's a company out there called Chipotle, Chipotle and they actually, um, when I did this career training, they have a tuition assistance, $5,000 a year. So, you know, I said to the, um, suggested to the students, you know, uh, three of them said, oh, that's it. I'm, I'm changing jobs tonight. I'm going to go get that tuition assistant because they're high school and they're looking to help subsidize their college education. But, you know, if you have a child that's out and they've gone through their food budget money or the expenses, you know, this is another opportunity. They can go onto LinkedIn and find something local because you can make your search field as short or um, as far as you want it to go, right? So um, anyway, I did just want to take you through that job features because I think it's pretty impressive. So let's go back to my search previously because I want to talk to you about the keywords. And um, we're going to take the account in Greater Philadelphia. And these are different accountant jobs. And one of the things that I said to you that I'd mentioned to you is how I help people craft really great resumes, right? So what I do with that is we use a tool and it's called Word Cloud. And what we do is we go out to the core responsibilities on these internships and I will copy and paste that into a Word document. And I will do, um, I will not put the specifications, job specifications, um, but I might put what uh, the individuals are expected to do into this. And I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go across the country. I'm gonna expand my, marketplace up here to across the country. And I might go pick five, 10, 15 different um, job descriptions. Remember, people, um, HR companies are, are investing time designing these. So they're really telling you what is it that they're looking for. So how are you gonna make your um, resume more relevant? Well, you know, you're gonna try and make your application and your cover letter pitch to the skills that they're looking for. So if you were to go and use WordCloud, once again, I want you to go and find five to seven different um, specifications. And when I say specifications, qualification sections on profiles, I want you to copy these into a Word document and then I want you to upload it to WordCloud. And what WordCloud does is it takes the words that are used more frequently and it makes them larger in font size. And it then allows you to identify some of your keywords. So you know when we were back here and we were looking at your profile, and I mentioned to you your skill sets. Make sure that your skill sets are in line with some of the keywords that are being mentioned in the job descriptions, right? So when you do the word cloud, and then you go back and look at your skills, within this section, you're gonna make sure that you're, oh, I went into word skills, I went to add. Um, <laughs> But if you go into this, let me, it's down further. You just want to expand upon it. When you go into this, these are going to be some of the keywords that are going to come out of those five to seven different um, job descriptions that you copied into a Word document and then you upload it to WordCloud. 
So I hope that makes sense. If you have a question on that, feel free to reach out. And now I want to take you to my next favorite resource for looking for a job, and that's Reference USA. So I discovered this back in the day when I was working at the CPA firm, but it's an amazing tool. So I want you, um, if you don't currently have a library card, um, Caroline Nisi let us all know yesterday she went online to the Delaware County Library System, and even during the stay-at-home um, session, Right now, you can go on and apply for a library card. So the reason that it's important is because on the back of this library card, you're gonna have a digital number in here. So I'm pretty much covering mine, but um, that number is gonna help you get into Reference USA. So when I go to my um, library, and I live out in Media, Pennsylvania, and if I was to go to resources and go to references, that's gonna take me here. I've done this quickly just so that we're not wasting time here. One of the reference libraries that I want to look like in the reference sources is, um, it, just to let you know, the Delaware County Library System has over 80 databases within it that you can access for free. But what I really want to look at under exploring e-resources, and I will tell you, I've been on Chester County Library site, everyone's a little different. So if you go into the search tool, find the keyword, and you hit Reference USA, it's going to bring you to Reference USA. And when you go into Reference USA, before you get to this page here, because I've already gone through it, you're gonna to need to add that digital profile number for your library card into that section. And then it's gonna ask you to agree that you're not gonna do anything malicious. But here's the really cool thing about Reference USA. Companies pay tens of thousands of dollars for access to this data and this information. And the reason that this is interesting to me um, when I'm helping my clients go out to connect with businesses is because LinkedIn has a job base, but so does Reference USA. So right now it's telling me there's over two and a half million jobs listed on Reference USA. So if I was to go into this section of it, it allows me to do a quick search or an advanced search. So it says, what keywords companies do you wanna work for? What city? Or I can go into advanced search and I can fill in more boxes and I can do the Boolean seat search and you know with the exact phrases or whatnot. But even look at this. If you need help, if you need just reviews on some job search tips, interviewing tips, resume writing help, it's all right here in Reference USA. So it's a great resource tool for anyone who's trying to go out and read and utilize that. But let's go back to quick search. And let's say that I wanted to see, I'm gonna pick a company. And yes, I did this yesterday, or I did this on Wednesday, and we went to Thomas Jefferson University and we put in Philadelphia. And yeah, as you can tell, it just populates it. And then I went over and I want to see review results. View results. So this is every type of job that Jefferson's currently hiring for. If you click on the job, it takes you right into the job description. You can see here, it tells you which entity within Jefferson is hiring. And here it tells you the date that it's posted. So when I'm talking to you about going out and finding job descriptions or position descriptions and copying and pasting them, you don't have to just use LinkedIn for your research on that. You can come right into Reference USA and put in the term for the type of position you're looking for, go out and find some companies that you're interested in working with and, and make it match up with some of the keywords that they're putting out in those positions. So this is everything that Jefferson is hiring for at this stage in time, right? And they have over four pages of opportunities. So if you wanted to work in Abington, you could go through the Abington site. But let's take a look at this in a different mindset. Because let's say that right now, you're really interested, and I'm gonna go back and do revise search. And I'm gonna get out of the job section. So remember, this was the job section. And that is very vast and can allow you to put in any type of opportunity. Um, but let's say that I'm trying to sell something to Jefferson University or I'm looking to, um, what else might I be looking to do? Maybe I'm looking to get a, a job as a CFO um, at Jefferson, right? Or maybe working under the CFO at Jefferson. I want to take you back to the beginning page on this Reference USA. Okay, available databases. So here we are. Remember, I mentioned to you, I think this is a tremendous resource and so many people aren't aware of you, how, that it even exists. But if you are 
looking to bring in business from new businesses. Look at this. It's giving you a list of 2 million new businesses that were started. And I don't know what the time frame is. You'd have to go in and look at that. But if you were trying to market and trying to build um, additional sales opportunities and you focus on new businesses, then you can go right into this and you can export the contact information for the firms. But let's go back and look at this. This is data that they have collected. Some of it's verified and some of it's not verified and you'll be able to tell this when we go into it. But anyway, it's telling you that out of this database, um, there's 57 million active businesses and 34 million closed businesses. So let's take a look at this and let's search some of that information. So once again, I'm gonna put in Jefferson. Um, And I might decide that what I want to do is I want, enter at least two characters. Oh, for, all right. Let me go here and put in Philadelphia. Let me see if that'll work. There we go. Um, I wonder if you need to have, so I'm gonna go to view results. Enter at least two characters up to 30 to search by company name. What is going on here? Um, maybe I put too much in. Maybe it's more than 30. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let's say Thomas Jefferson is the name of the company. Let's say Philadelphia. Oh, city of Philadelphia. Um, let's go to state and put in PA. Every recording is a little different. That's all I can tell you. Okay, so here I am in um, Jefferson's data in Reference USA. So if I go down here and I was looking to find who the leadership team is there or who's in charge of a division that I'm trying to reach out to, as you can see um, here, this will provide the corporate tree um, for um, whatever Abigail's handling. But if we wanna go down here and uh, you can click on anyone. So let's see, I'll pick, I, I, you know, I know we had someone yesterday that I was looking at, um, but let's just for all intent and purposes, um, let's see what Deborah Glassman's doing. So say I went into Deborah Glassman. Okay. So this is going to tell me exactly what she, what area she's responsible for. So it looks like she is, um, we're going to go down through here. But what this told me, tells me is that um, there is, and the executive title. Yeah, see, I was trying to get you a little different information. So let's go back here. But when you go in and you start searching for people, you can see um, all different kinds of information. Here it tells you any job listings that are on Deed right now for Jefferson University. So you can just go to a company page if you identify that a company is somebody you want to work for. Let's see, um, see what Larry Goldstein's responsible for. So if we go down into this, it's, it's telling you for nine years he's been in this database. But let's just say that you found someone you were more interested in. Like say you found the CFL of the company, right? One of the things that I recommend to people is they go in and they read what's been going on with the company, what's new and exciting. So right now we've got a lot going on with COVID. Um, this looks to be um, some of the different information along those lines. Um, but what I do is I recommend to people to check out the news feed. So if I went back and I got out of Jefferson and I took another company, uh, it's just gonna make it easier for me. Let's go look up um, Wawa. Look, they're a member and I'm a big fan of Wawa. And we're gonna put them in Media PA and we're gonna view the results. We're doing a quick search on Wawa Media PA. I don't know why that's in there. Are they incorporated? 
Hmm. Well, this is my newest snag. Um, this, I don't understand why this isn't working, so I can't help you on that. Okay, so here we go. So, you know, Chris has come in and he's done a program for us, so let's take a look at, at, at this. But what this does is it gives you each of the executives' names, right? And if I go in and I check out this profile here, so I needed to have Wawa Food Markets or Wawa Inc. Um, we're gonna use Chris's um, source um, for the interesting information that we're gonna get out of this. It will help me show you how vast this research tool is. Um, so what this is going to tell you is the metro areas that they're currently serving. Um, it gives you their industry codes, right? Go down here, um, it's telling you their, their sales location volumes. Um, they have not posted what their um, corporate sales volume is. But when I go down here and I look at Chris, it tells me his title. Um, I can load company news. It's also telling me that this is a, a range of what they're spell selling on services. Now, you know, here's what I'll tell you. It's a great tool, but I believe this has not been verified because I'm sure some of these areas, as in accounting, is much higher than, you know, uh, $2,500 to $5,000. However, I might believe more when I'm down here to payroll and benefits that, yeah, they probably are spending over a million for employees. Um, this is, you know, once again, a lot of this is undervalued. So unfortunately, he didn't turn out to be a good reference source either. But if I was to go down here, this gives me the business history as to when it was started, right? Um, it tells me who competitors are for any of the businesses that he's looking at, that I'm looking at, right? So if I go and I say, okay, well, who are Wawa's competitors? Sorry, I'm doing this on you, Chris, but um, this will tell you who the competitors are. So if you're trying to sell to Wawa, you might want to reach out and try and sell these other entities, right? Um, this gives you a little bit of the history, but um, Wawa started much, much prior to that. So if I was to go in here and I looked at company news and I found that Wawa was expanding into California because I have a lot of people in California just waiting for Wawa. I know that's not happening and I'm not trying to spread any false rumors. But if I was to go in here and look to read an article on Wawa and then had an interview with someone on the Wawa team, I could say, oh, wow, I see that, you know, you gave coffee out to all the police during COVID, you know. Um, you know, you're partners with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society. You know, it's to give you opportunities to engage and to develop more of that relationship. So that's what I wanted to show you with this. I just think it's a great tool. Um, I'm sorry it wasn't as seamless today as it was in the program that we did the other day, but I hope at least it gave you some insights as to how you could use Reference USA going forward. Um, if you wanted to go to a company to find out what jobs they had here as an additional resource, remember a lot of companies don't post jobs that they're hiring for. I mean, they do have some, but that's why your connections and your relationships within those organizations may help you because a lot of times they don't want it public information that they may be out looking for some new people. But um, so here's an entry level uh, mechanical engineer that they're looking for for Wawa, um, you know, that's out there on Indeed. So this is the, you know, I'm sorry, this is the US Department of Justice looking for that type of an individual. So, um, and that was because there was an engineer that I was looking, that I was working with out in Chester County. So that's probably why it's populating in that search. So anyway, that's a little bit about, um, you know, Reference USA. Once again, I think it's just an amazing tool. You can get access to it for free through your library. The other thing I wanted to let you know is the libraries all have a resource person, a business resource person, and they will sit down with you. This is what I did in Chester County. And they spent, um, I went to, they offered a session on it. And then they also showed me how to download and ex, um, export some of the contact information. So if I was trying to build different databases, I could use this as a free tool to do that. So um, going fast forward here, I'm gonna go back into our presentation and we're getting ready to wrap this up. So hopefully I haven't lost too many of you, but if you had to cut out, I totally understand. Um, I want to go down to slide 48. And for some reason, it's not allowing me to bring myself back to it. So let's go from current slide and then there we are. So um, what I'm going to do is take you down to slide 48. And 
it will not allow me to do that, will it? Hmm. Hang in there with me just for one second. I do not want you to have to go through this whole situation. Here we go. I'm like, how can that be? So I'm going to take you down just to do a quick re um, referral for you on that. Um, this is just information on the Reference USA. I did some screen captures on some of the things I showed you on LinkedIn, um, but I also showed you some additional things. So I hope you'll find that. So let's get back to here um, just as we're starting to recap this. So here was the resource tool that I recommended for building your LinkedIn profile, right? It was wordcloud.com. And um, this is to help you build your resume and your LinkedIn profile. This is where you're gonna um, copy those job descriptions from across the country in different roles that you're looking to position yourself for and use some of those that content to build out your resume. I uh, also showed you about the LinkedIn banner and how you can use Canva for that. And then I put Word Cloud down here twice because I want you to use that and remember for that keyword tool for the skill set. And I want to make sure that you incorporate that into it. Um, I guess it might be happy to just go from my current slide. I'm sorry. So there's just exactly what we discussed. Uh, the next thing is I wanted to include in here if you're thinking of starting a business. So you know, you may be at the stage of the game where you've decided, you know what, I, I think it's best for me to go on and, and build my own path. So I wanted to let you know that SCORE, it's a senior, uh, re, it's a senior corporate organization for retired executives. And what this is, they is they're volunteer mentors. And they work with um, business owners throughout the region and across the country. Um, and you can find more about them from score.org. But they also usually have a good relationship with your chambers of commerce. And um, I would reach out to them and see. But they also do some programs through the library system. And back in the day when I was launching my company, I ended up going through a program with them. And they have four different sessions. It cost $100, but they take you everything through creating a business plan to developing a marketing strategy, looking at the financial picture and having your financial documents all squared away to launching your business. So the organization, the management, they were a terrific resource. They'll meet with you ongoing as mentors and there's no charge for that service. So the only thing that they charged for was the, um, the four different sessions that they offered. The other thing I wanted to let you know is the SBA has a vast library of available resources and online training. So if you're thinking that you'd like to um, create your own business, then go to the sba.gov and Learning Center and you'll find those resource tools there. The other piece that I wanted to share with you is some people, if you're deciding to start your own business, you're like, well, I need a virtual assistant. Like I need someone who's going to help me with the website, someone who might be able to help me with graphics, someone who may be able to help me with um, IT. So I wanted to share with you you can get virtual assistance through these companies that I've listed, and there's probably more, but these were the three I'm familiar with. And there's two reasons I'm posting this. If it turns out that you've decided that, you know what, you just wanna be a remote worker and you wanna start your own business and do this on your own. Um, I want you to know that you could just go set yourself up as a virtual assistant um, and offer your services directly one-on-one -on -one to small, business, small businesses who are looking for people with your skill set, right? So say your crystal report read, writing is your sweet spot, right, for Excel. Um, you could go out and post that that's the opportunity that you will provide services for. And you can set yourself up as a registered virtual assistant on any one of those platforms. The one thing I just want to remind you of is they do get a percentage um, of your fees based on your fees for each engagement that you take on. But still, regardless, either way, I don't think you could go wrong with either or any of them. The other thing is if you don't like to write your own resume, you can always reach out to them. They've got people who do write resumes. They've got people who will do social media platforms for you. It's really a bunch of small businesses. Sorry, we jumped forward um, uh, for that. So let me see if I can get us there. Some days. Life's just, a, it's getting late in the afternoon on this rebroadcast re, 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 re here, so bear with me. Um, even the computer screens, even the computer side is getting hot um, where the fan's coming out. So I shared this the other day. Um, if you're using Zoom for some of the one-on-one -on -one meetings or some of your interviews, 
you can get some um, Philadelphia backgrounds that the Inquirer is sharing this week for free. So I just wanted to share that with you. I also wanted to just go through some final reminders to wrap this up. So the one was to secure a Gmail or a professional email account that you only use for job opportunities. I want you to remember LinkedIn profiles are not optional anymore, right? If you're seeking employment, you need a, a robust LinkedIn profile. People like to work with people that they know, they like, they trust, and that they can relate to. They wanna know that when you come into their organization, you'll be a good fit, you know? So in your um, profile and in your resume, talk about um, what you bring to teams, you know? Um, be authentic and be yourself. Make sure your professional image would allow me to recognize you if we were to meet for an interview. You know, you may go to a company and they may have four different people sitting in the room waiting to go in and get interviewed. I, as the HR manager, want to come out and know exactly who I'm walking towards, right? So once again, if you're sporting a beard and you're keeping the beard, do that. If you've decided to change your hair color, update your photo. Um, the other things is make sure that your photo is a recent photo. Um, I can't tell you how many times the people that you meet in person look nothing like their profile photo. And here's why that matters. If I'm at a networking event and I go and I um, go to LinkedIn to search to connect with you and you look nothing like that individual, I'm probably not going to go much further into that to make a connection with you. You know, you want to stay relevant and you want to stay top of mind. So make sure that your profile on LinkedIn um, keeps you in that top of mind minds, uh, range. Um, the other thing is, remember, if you do any changes on that LinkedIn profile, you're going to need to hit save. And just as a final note, and this is more for any younger people who are out there viewing this, although after this stay at home order, um, you know, a lot of friends are posting things on social media and you just want to make sure that an employer, if they, they do go to social media platforms for you. So um, especially any hiring agents and recruiters, they're going out and they're doing a search for you. And so you want to make sure that nothing that you have out there on social media would ever be questionable. Remember, um, LinkedIn is the largest search engine out there for Google. So, you know, you definitely want to have a strong profile. You want to make sure that you've updated it. And um, I hope that, you know, you found today's session valuable. And um, I guess that just about wraps us up for today. I want to once again thank the Irish Chamber for this opportunity. Um, my goal in life is to help you um, at least be able to take a deep breath during these challenges and times and to know that there are opportunities out there. And if at the end of the day, when you go back and you're struggling um, to secure a new opportunity, if by chance your opportunity is not still in existence, I wanted to make sure that you had the tools that you've had and also the confidence to go out and to build the type of profile and presence in the marketplace to help you get hired. So once again, my name is Pat Buchanan. Uh, my email is pat at pmbmarketing.net. My company is PMB Marketing and we like to help people soar. So have a great day, everyone. Thanks for your time today. And um, I'm available if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks again and make it a great one. Bye.